Faith without works is a dead thing. It lacks any proof of spiritual life. And as such, those who merely profess Christianity but do not possess a transformed heart and life, well, a transformed life that true saving faith produces. You know what they're like? They're like the walking dead. The walking dead. They're dead while they're yet alive. Tonight we're going to continue in our study of the book of James. It's called Living Faith. And uh, tonight, part 11... Faith that works. Faith that works. So if you'll turn in your Bible to James chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 14 through 26. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his own son, Upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that works, by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be here with us tonight and O Holy Spirit, be our teacher and our guide. These are things that are a bit confusing to us, and so we ask you to clarify it. And we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, in our previous study, in the last part of the previous chapter, the Apostle James pointed out the error of trusting in a mere profession of Christianity. Let me point that out again. There's a danger in trusting in a mere profession of Christianity. When it is genuine, true Christianity is always a potent force for transforming the hearts and minds of those who believe. People who simply confess Christ and yet continue to live unholy lives, they're only fooling themselves. Their wicked works are evidence that they've never truly been born again. Instead, they've built their hope of salvation on a faulty foundation. They've overlooked the truth that a person is only justified by a living faith. Let me say that again. You ready? A person is only justified by a living faith that is powerful enough to transform their lives and produce good fruit in their souls. Romans 3.28, this is what the Apostle Paul said, 
Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now you say, wait a second here. Do we have a conflict between James and Paul? They seem to be saying different things. But actually, in his epistle, the Apostle Paul, although he may seem to some to be asserting the direct opposite of what James is saying, that's not the case. Paul places great emphasis on the truth that we are justified by faith alone and not by the works of the law. Now this seeming difference is easy to reconcile if we think about it for a minute. I've heard it said before, James and Paul are talking about the same coin. <laughs> One's talking about one side and the other's talking about the other side, but it's the same coin. When Paul is talking about being justified by faith without the deeds of the law, he's simply speaking about another sort of religious work than those of which James was speaking. Paul was referencing the old Jewish religious system that was based on obedience to the law of Moses. In Romans chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. So Paul is referencing the Old Testament law. James, on the other hand, was speaking about the good works that are produced in a person's life as a result of obedience to the gospel and the transforming effects of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Paul's insistence on a salvation by faith apart from good works and James' insistence on a salvation that results in a transformed life of good works are not incompatible. They actually complement each other and exalt the true gospel faith that is the only thing that has the power to save and justify us. Paul is highlighting the insufficiency of the works of the law apart from faith in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. James is simply highlighting the same true faith, but from a different angle by explaining the genuine fruits of of real living faith. Paul was not only speaking of different works from those spoken of by James, but he was speaking of a completely different view and role of good works in the salvation of a human soul. Paul was refuting those who depended on the merit of their own good works to make them acceptable to God. James was refuting others who were depending on their bare profession of faith without a corresponding transformation of heart and soul. God has no way of saving a person without also transforming them. Jesus said, you must be born again. Those who contend that the gospel stands in opposition to the law of God and those who contend that the law stands in opposition to the gospel are both wrong. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. True faith in Jesus Christ is a living thing that always produces good fruit in those who possess it. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, Paul said, for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. I want to speak about another important, important point before we go to that verse. The justification of which Paul speaks is different from that which is spoken of by James. Paul is speaking of, of a person standing with heaven as being made evident before God by simple faith. James is speaking of a person's faith being made evident to other people by good works. A person can only be justified before God by faith. But to be genuine, one's faith must be made obvious in the eyes of people 
by good works. And before God. In this way, the Apostle James is actually confirming what Paul says about true saving faith. To be genuine, faith must be a living, working faith that is energized by the love of God. You tell me that you're a Christian and you're living like the devil, I'll tell you, you're, you're self-deceived. You're just self-deceived. Jesus said you must be born again. Now in Titus chapter 3, verse 8, the Apostle Paul said, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will, that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. You hear that? That's the Apostle Paul. It's interesting, isn't it, Linda? Now faithful saying, and these things I will, that thou affirm constantly that they which believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. I'm afraid we've dropped the ball here. Faith without works is dead. It's not saving faith. You see, a false profession of faith may seem profitable at times. It may momentarily succeed in gaining the approval of others if you're at a church. In some circumstances, it may even secure worldly advancements. They may say, oh, well, he's a nice church-going man. But what profit is it to gain the whole world and yet lose one's own soul? Faith without works is a dead and useless thing as far as the salvation of one's soul is concerned. That kind of faith cannot save. I think we need to speak more about this. You see, simply professing to have saving faith and actually possessing it are two different things. You tell me that you're a child of God. You tell me that you're born again, and yet you're mean? And spiteful and hateful? I don't believe it. You don't have a living faith because a living faith is a transforming faith. It is possible, you know, for people to boast about their faith and yet at the same time be very self-deceived on the matter. Saving faith is a real thing and it has real effects on those who possess it. It's just not mind over matter, or it's not just positive confession over and over again. The man or the woman who is born again is new. They're a new creation. Old things have passed away. And they don't live like they did before they came to Christ. A person who claims to love God and others, and yet never does any works of sincere charity is only fooling themselves. Can I say that to you again? A person who claims to love God and other people, that means they claim to be a Christian, and yet they never do any works of sincere charity. They're only fooling themselves. Don't you love God? If you love God, you'd obey him. Don't you love other people? If you love other people, you'd do good to them, wouldn't you? Only makes sense. You see, to be genuine, faith must include the fruits of it. Namely, a supreme love for God and a love for others. I'm afraid that some people are just too inclined to satisfy themselves with a mere profession of Christian faith without the attendant works. They wrongly think that such dead, empty faith will save them. But they're wrong. It will not. Faith without works is a cheap and lifeless form of religion. It will do you no good. Faith without works is not good enough, <laughs> strong enough, or powerful enough to gain you entrance into heaven. You see, it's not good enough to just intellectually accept the articles of Christian faith. Even the demons can do that. 
The only faith that will bring a person to heaven is a transforming faith that always results in good works. A person could just as likely take pleasure in a dead body without a soul as God would take pleasure in a person with dead faith where there's no good works. You say, my works don't matter. They matter to God. Look at this verse. This is found in Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to what? Their works. You're going to be judged according to your works. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Your works matter. You know what people need? They need a faith that's obvious. Boasting of one's faith without works is not a wise thing to do. The Bible makes it clear that a person's faith is revealed by their good works. And James contends here that it is through good works that we manifest the saving, transforming power of God uh, to the world. Show me thy faith, James says, and uh, uh, without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. On judgment day, the dead will be judged according to their works. And on that day, there are many false confessors who will be exposed. They will have no evidence of true saving faith. For true faith is only made evident by good works of piety and love and mercy. Believing in the existence of one all-powerful God is a good thing as far as that goes. You see, because... There is only one God, and uh, you ought to only believe in one all-powerful God who made the heavens and the earth, because that's reality. But to rest in such shallow faith is insufficient to save one's soul. As I said, even the devils believe in such a way, and the thought of a just God makes them tremble. Now, why are they trembling it's interesting. They know they're going to be confined to hell for eternity when Jesus casts out the demons out of the demoniac of Gadara. They said, oh, don't send us there before our time. But they're trembling. Think about that. When the, when the demons consider God, they tremble. You see, to satisfy oneself with a, with a mere agreement to the articles of the Christian faith and to go no further is to be like a demon. You may even tremble in your belief. And yet you're no different than a demon. The devil's faith and knowledge of God only serves to horrify them concerning their eternal destiny. These devils tremble, not out of reverence for the Almighty, they tremble out of hatred and opposition to God on whom they believe, they believe in him. To be sufficient to save our souls, our faith must exceed that of the faith of the demons. It must be a living faith that results in our soul's transformation and our heart's submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Those who boast of their faith without works are to be looked upon as being very, very foolish people. Vain man, James says. Faith without works is a dead thing. It lacks any proof of spiritual life. And as such, those who merely profess Christianity but do not possess a transformed heart and life, well, <clears throat> a transformed life that true saving faith produces. You know what they're like? They're like the walking dead. The walking dead. 
They're dead while they're yet alive. Faith without works is dead. In Hebrews chapter 11, we have some examples of living faith. Abraham was an example. Here we read, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he, had, he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Now Abraham is called the father of the faithful. He is a prime example of true justification. And James states emphatically that Abraham was justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Paul, on the other hand, says that Abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Well, which one is true? <laughs> They're both true. In Romans chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, here's what Paul said, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Hebrews 11 and Romans 4 is showing us that the faith of both Abraham, and then later on we'll read about Rahab, the harlot, it was a living faith that produced good works of which James is speaking. What Abraham and Rahab actually did was proof that they truly believed in God. They had saving faith that manifested itself in good works. It was their faith that produced the good works. It was their faith that, in, that resulted in good works that endeared these believers to God and resulted in their being favored by heaven. They believed, and so they obeyed. Noah believed, and he obeyed. Everybody that's ever been saved believes and then obeys. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. They go together. They go together. Ye see then, James says, how that work, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Do you get it? Believing without obeying is not saving faith. It is dead and worthless for the saving of a soul. Those who want to have Abraham's blessing must be careful to secure his kind of faith. And what kind of faith was it? He was willing to believe God's word, deny himself, and submit to whatever God told him to do. Now Rahab was another example. She was justified by works based on her faith. She believed the reports. She heard of God's powerful presence with Israel, and she did something about it. Rahab proved that her faith was sincere by turning her back on her own nation and fleeing to God and his people for mercy. Rahab's story is a wonderful example of the power of living faith to transform and change sinners. James 2.26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You just can't get around it. Faith and works go together. James concludes his thoughts on this subject with this illustration, and it's worth thinking about. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. <clears throat> imagine if you can, it's a horrible thought actually, to imagine a body that doesn't have life in it. <clears throat> a body that doesn't have life in it is going to soon lose any beauty that it may have ever had. 
And it will in time become nothing more than a festering carcass. <laughs> That's dead faith. There may some be, be some beauty in it uh, to begin with, but it gets old and it's, it's corrupt. And it gets worse and worse and worse. Just as when a soul is gone out of a body, so a mere profession of faith without works is useless. It's loathsome and it's an offensive thing. The best works we do without faith are dead because they lack the proper foundation of a love for God. It is only by faith that anything we do is really good in the eyes of the Lord. It is only when we walk in obedience to him because of our love for him and our trust in him that we will find acceptance in heaven. You see, even the most orthodox professions of faith without works, it's a dead thing. Plants that produce no fruit are useless. The Bible makes that clear. Yes, faith is the root of salvation, but good works are the fruit of salvation. We must see to it that we have both. When considering faith in works, either without the other cannot justify and save. You can't have faith without works, and you can't have works without faith. You need them both. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 14, and we'll close with this. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. Oh, uh oh, back up. I'll read that again. This is Jesus now speaking. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. <laughs> There's true faith with works. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He says to the workers of iniquity, depart from me, I never knew you. I never manifested myself to you. I never made myself known to you. But he that loves my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I hope you can see it. It is confusing at times, but it's real simple. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead, being alone. True faith results in good works. So if you look at your life and you say, you know what? I'm living like the devil. You know what you better do? You better check yourself because you may have the faith of demons. <laughs> you may not have saving faith because saving faith is a transforming thing. Well, Father, we thank you for your word, and I thank you for uh, James and his clarification on this matter. I pray, Lord, there may be someone listening to me right now that is trusting in their own profession of faith. There's no works in their life. There's no transformation. Nothing's happened. They're living like the devil, and they know it. They have the faith of demons. Father, move on them by your Holy Spirit and help them to open their eyes so that they will understand that faith without works is dead being alone and it's insufficient to save them. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen.